So let's continue with the greedy algorithms playlist. Today, for starting off, hey, we welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is insert intervals. So what is the problem stating? The stating that you will be given an intervals array, which will be having n number of intervals. This is the first interval. This is the second interval. Every interval will have a starting point. Will have an ending point, and this intervals array will be non-overlapping in nature. What does that mean? If you write one comma three, and then if you write six comma nine, they are not overlapping between themselves, right? And along with this, you'll be given a new interval, which is basically a start and an end. Now your task is to insert this new interval in the intervals array such that it still remains as non overlapping once you have done that you have to return me the resultant array let's understand so if i have to insert 2 comma 5 in the intervals array it's definitely going to go somewhere over here right so if i insert it it will be something like 1 comma 3 then a 2 comma 5 and then a 6 comma 9 and this might be my resultant array but the question is asking you to make sure it is still non overlapping in nature but if you look at this properly these two are overlapping 1 3 and 2 5 they're overlapping they're overlapping so if there is a overlap we'll have to make sure that the overlap goes away how can you do that super simple if it is 1 3 2 5 you take the entire range you take the entire range so that's typically going to be 1 5 such that 1 comma 3 is also in that and 2 comma 5 is also in that and after that you can have a 6 comma 5 and now i can say that the resultant array doesn't have any overlapping intervals and this is what they're expecting you to return so what if uh, i just change the example let's change the example to something as 4 comma 5 4 comma 5 like that 4 comma 5 in such a scenario what will happen is you can straight away write 1 comma 3 4 comma 5 and a 6 comma 9 and they are not overlapping and they are not overlapping and if they are not overlapping you can straight away return this super simple let's try out one more example if you look at this particular example you do see that uh, there is an there's there's like five intervals and a new interval that you will have to insert So typically, if I have to write them, it's going to be one comma two, three comma four, and then the five comma eight, and then the six comma seven, and then the eight comma ten, and then the twelve comma sixteen. So if you look at it, this section is not overlapping, and this section is not overlapping. What is overlapping is this portion. This portion is overlapping. Five to eight. Six to seven, eight to ten. So there is an overlap. So can I say that okay, this section is going to be taken as it is, which is one comma two, three comma four. Now the overlap section, uh, overlap section, starts from five, ends at ten. So I can probably take it. And once I've taken it, I can write the last section, which is twelve comma sixteen, done and dusted. And this will be your resultant array. also in the problem statement they have stated that the intervals will already be in a sorted order will already be in a sorted order and will have no overlap in them when you are given the intervals array when you try to insert there might be one overlap got it so how do we solve this particular problem so i'm going to start off with the naive solution that is trying out brute force and then we can analyze the time complexity and see if we can do better or not but as of now a very simple brute force the brute force will be the method that i explained while explaining the example number 2 let's understand we have the new interval as 6 comma 8 can i say 6 comma 8 is over here and i i from the naked eye i can see that 5 comma 7 and 8 comma 10 will be overlapping but there will be a segment on the left which will not overlap and there will be a segment on right which will not overlap with 6 comma 8 over here if you visualize this is the left segment that doesn't overlap this is the right segment that doesn't overlap and there is a middle segment that overlaps 
So I can break the problem into three different segments. The left, the middle and the right. Let's start uh, this solution. So can I say that this is not overlapping? How do I know this? There is a two which like the interval ends before your new interval begins. Before your new interval begins. So this is not overlapping. 3 comma 4 doesn't overlap. Why? Because it is ending at 4. This is starting at 6. Doesn't overlap. 5 comma 7. This is ending at 7 and this is starting at 6. This is might be overlapping. Might be. Right? So I'm very sure this is my left section. I've identified my left section that doesn't overlap. So what I'll do is I'll pick them up. 1 comma 2. At a 3 comma 4. I'll put them into my answer. Perfect. I'll try to figure out the middle segment that is overlapping. Okay. 5 comma 7. Does it overlap? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. How do you know this? There is a 5. Right? Which is before the ending point. This is overlap. Perfect. 8 comma 10. Does it overlap? Yes. Because there is an 8 which is before the ending point. I know these two are overlapping and this is not because this is starting at 12 and it has already ended at 8. So I know two segments, two intervals that are overlapping. Perfect. If I have to write them down, it's 5, 7, 6, 8 and an 8, 10. If I ask you, what will be the combined interval of this? It will be like, take the leftmost which is 5, take the rightmost which is 10. Technically, what I'm doing is taking the minimum of all the intervals that are over, uh, overlapping and taking the maximum of all the ending points of the overlapping intervals to get the new interval. So I've got my new interval. Since this interval is not overlapping, can I surely say, because it's given in the question that the intervals array is sorted. It's given in the question that the intervals array is sorted. So anything to the right of it, anything to the right of it will always have the intervals that are not overlapping. Yes, so I can just copy them. 12, comma 16. Done. Done. And you might be thinking, hey, 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 what if there is no overlapping section? I have an example for that as well. Let's try it out. So let's try it out. 1, comma 2 doesn't overlap. 3, comma 4 doesn't overlap. 7, comma 7. Now this is where you'll be like, this is the leftmost section. This is the leftmost section before the new interval. So you can straight away pick 1, 2 and 3, 4. So you have the leftmost section. Now you are thinking, can this be your overlapping one or not? And you have a 7, which is a starting point, which is starting after your new interval. So there is no overlapping section. And if there is no overlapping section, you can straight away pick this 5, 6. Yes, done. And from here, you can just copy paste everything, which is 7, 7, because on the right, they're not going to overlap any further. So you can just pin them up and write it. Super simple. If there is overlapping section, you just take the minimum and maximum. Otherwise, you take the interval. So let's quickly write down the pseudo code. I'll be writing down the function. It's going to take a 2D array. So basically, of a size n cross 2 where every index will have two values, the starting and the ending. And you'll also be given a new interval array, which will have two values. Which will have two values at the index 0, the starting point, at the index 1, uh, the ending point. Perfect. So let's quickly start off scanning. So I need a result in 2D array, which is going to store all the intervals, like the answer intervals. I'll be requiring i equal to 0, which is going to traverse in the array. So let's quickly start traversing to figure out the first left portion, which doesn't collide. I'm going to go i lesser than n. I'm going to write array of i and the ending point. So ending point is 1. If that's lesser than the new interval that's given to you, that's starting point, which is at 0. If that is the case, I'm very, very sure that this is on my left radar. And what I can do is I can say rest dot add or push back, whatever it is, array of i. So I'm going to store this as the answer. 
and I'm going to do i equal to i plus 1. Go to the next one. And this will make sure that you get the leftmost part. Left part. It's time to figure out the like the overlapping part. Okay. How do I figure out the overlapping part? Isn't it very simple? Again, the same thing. While i lesser than n and and the starting, the starting, which is array of i0 should be before the ending of the new interval. And if that is the case, we need to figure out what is the single interval that will come up for this overlapping intervals. I'm going to pick up the minimal. So I can say new interval, which is given to you. At the zero, which is the starting point, I can say minimum of either whatever, like wherever it starts at or the colliding, this, this is the colliding array of I0. So I take minimal of all the starting points of the collisions. And for the ending point, what I can do is I can say new interval of one because this is the ending point. Max of new interval of one comma array of I1. And right after this, you can do I equal to I plus one. Once this is done, you will get all the intervals that are colliding. And you'll have the new interval stored. So what you can do is you can say rest dot add your new interval. Done. After this, you have the right portion left. So you can simply go ahead and say while i lesser than n. And you can say rest dot add array of i. And then you can move i equal to i plus 1. And... At the end of the day, you can go ahead and return res. That's it. That's done and dusted. Super simple. What is the time complexity? Okay, we have the left portion. We have the uh, middle portion. We have the right portion. So overall, we are going through each and every element. So can I say that the time complexity will be big open? And the space complexity, in order to store the answer, because the question is already stating, you can use an extra variable to store the answer. So that's going to be a bigo of n. So this will be the time complexity and space complexity. Can we optimize this? No, because the question is already stating we need a separate array to return the answer. And you cannot do better than bigo of n. You'll have to go through each and every element. So we cannot do better than this. So this will be the most optimal solution. Sometimes the better solution is the most optimal solution. So don't think out of the box. So this will be it for this one. So if you're still now watching and if you've understood everything, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's play some other video. Tell them about ID. Whenever your heart is broken.